Francisco Rivera. I'm fighting out of Buena Park, California. Mi nombre es Antonio Duarte y vengo de Entran Vale Todo de Tijuana. He likes to stand a little bit and I know he likes to go to the ground and submit you if he can. So I'm going to try to keep it standing and knock him out if I can. I know he's, he he's heavy handed. Um, he's very good with his hands and he has a lot of experience. Just very explosive, very quick knockout. Uh, my last fight against Brad McDonald, I knocked him out in like 30 seconds, so hopefully I could do it again. My opponent is a striker, um, and my specialty is boxing, so I feel that it's going to be a great fight for the fans, um, and they'll be satisfied with the outcome. Antonio Duarte, 15 and 3, fighting out of Tijuana, Mexico. He says that his specialty is boxing. We'll see a guy that will want to stand and trade with him, and Francisco Rivera, who put on a boxing clinic himself against Brad McDonald last time out here at Tachi. I don't even know if I'd call it a clinic. I'd just call it more like he came, he saw, he conquered. He rolled in and became sheriff of the town. Brad McDonald was looking for a UFC vet to help him leverage himself in the same position his older brother Michael's in, and he got a rude awakening. And but Antonio Duarte, too, he says he likes the boxing game. That's his specialty. Nine of his wins, though, come by way of submission. He's more of a well-rounded fighter than people realize, but he is a good striker, and he's a gritty striker. Rivera probably has the power advantage here, but Antonio Duarte is a guy that'll get inside in the clinch, mix it up with you, he can go outside, he can jab. If you're wondering if you've seen him before, he actually fought on an affliction prelim on the very first affliction card a few years ago against Albert Rios, and I actually thought that he deserved the decision. It was a very, very tough fight, but in that fight, you saw a lot of Antonio Duarte dirty boxing, roughing him up inside. I'm curious to see what he can do to Francisco Rivera because he might actually have an advantage on the ground, and dirty boxing might be the way to do it. If they're going from distance, Francisco Rivera could really mark him up and mark him up bad. Bantamweights definitely coming into the forefront of mixed martial arts. You can expect to see a lot of action in Bantamweight fights, whether it's on the feet, whether it's on the ground. It seems, if, especially if a fight goes more than a round, Bantamweights tend to go and really display every aspect of mixed martial arts. Well, I mean, you, just because of the, the lower weight class, these guys don't get tired. They know, you know you're gonna get three solid rounds of action. And um, I'm really curious to see if uh, this is a stand-up fight, because I'm telling you, I've trained with Francisco Rivera, one of the best Strikers, pure boxers I've ever trained with, and um, I'm curious to see if this is a stand-up fight. I'm curious to see who's going to win. Plus, Francisco Rivera hits like a truck. He's a serious hitter, and if he had more of an opportunity in the UFC to face stand-up fighters, he might have actually got to show it off. I mean, it's easy to dismiss him because of his UFC run, but he was simply a raw striker facing much better, well-rounded mixed martial artists inside the octagon. Francisco Rivera, we mentioned his last time out here at Tachi Palace fights. He was victorious in brutal fashion over Brad McDonald. Can we expect to see him come out and, and carry that aggressive attitude in this fight as well? I think it's a fight that he could do it in because if Duarte does want to strike with him, or even if Rivera just believes he wants to strike with him, it should make him feel more comfortable. I think one of the things that hurt Rivera in the UFC is when he was facing more well-rounded mixed martial arts, even if they were just a prospect, and he got tapped out by Eric Koch. Yeah, Koch's a younger guy, didn't have a ton of experience, but Koch was a lot more well-rounded and prepared for the UFC. Rivera was like a tough boxer without a ton of real MMA experience trying to figure out how to compete against high-level bantamweights. Really, even though he's 30 and is a UFC vet, he's kind of like a prospect of the state learning how to be an effective puncher in MMA. We've talked about his stand-up game. You mentioned that you've trained with him, Javier. Analyze his jiu-jitsu game. If this fight hits the floor, how comfortable is he going to be on his back, or how comfortable is he going to be working uh, top position? He, he, he's a comfortable, well-rounded fighter. He'll be comfortable on the ground. He's not a jiu-jitsu black belt, and he's not looking to be a jiu-jitsu black belt, I don't think. But I tell you what, man, he hits like a truck. He's got great movement. He's very elusive and uh, has great footwork and um, very fast hands, deceivingly fast hands. And can he carry that uh, strength of his hands on the floor as well? I mean, we talk about hand power and hand speed. Does that carry on the, on the floor? You know what? I try not to find out. I try not to get hit on the floor by, by anybody, especially Francisco Rivera. I wasn't about to test my chin on the ground against him, but uh, thanks for asking. Till let's say five foot eight inches tall for Francisco Rivera, Antonio Duarte five foot seven, both weighed in at 135 pounds. Uh, Rivera, the elder, at 30 years of age, Antonio Duarte at 24 years. Another thing about Eric Koch, Eric Koch is a much larger fighter than Francisco Rivera. Eric Koch is a very large 145 yeah. pounder, and a really tough 145 pounder. I mean, there's a reason that he's one of the guys that people are wondering how he's going to fare against Jose Aldo in a year or two.
Bantamweight's in the cage here. Tachi Pals fights 12. Let's go up to Joe Martinez and get our official. And now, punch fans, we are set to go. This next attraction, three rounds scheduled in the Bantamweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist standing five feet, seven inches tall. Weighing in 135 and one half pounds, he brings an outstanding record into the cage. 15 victories, just three defeats. Presentando el hijo de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Antonio, el Tigre Duarte. And his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing five feet, eight inches tall. Weighing in 134 and three quarter pounds, his record stands six victories and just two defeats. He fights at a Buena Park, California. Here is Francisco, Cisco Rivera. Referee in charge, Jason McCoy. Let's go. Breathe when you hear me. Jason McCoy getting this bantamweight assignment. Francisco Rivera. Our fight now. Uh, Set our pace, that. our tone. Let's go. Antonio Duarte in the white with black. So is Francisco Establish. Rivera. Ankle brace is probably Establish. the best way to tell them apart. Let's go. Red gloves, blue gloves. And they're both throwing those gloves here early. Don't wait on him, Kick there by Duarte. Now. Just look at how dialed in Rivera is. Ooh, well, uppercuts, uppercuts, three uppercuts. Saddle, saddle. Rivera slipping and countering at the saddle, same time. Saddle, Doing a very nice job. Look at that beautiful Duarte combination. Or Cisco landing everything. The Work uppercut is definitely working for him pace. early. 30 Work seconds in, and we're seeing throwing, but throwing with technique. Guys throwing straight punches, combinations. This is what you want to see of the guys that call themselves strikers in the bantamweight division. Another thing, too, uh, when Francisco Rivera throws his punches, he sits on his punches very well. He has tremendous balance. Look at that head movement, countering, beautiful technique. And never one punch. Two, three, four. Yeah. He, he, he's throwing three, four punches every, com every time he throws. He is marked up under the left eye, though. A little bit of a mouse for me. Just a minute in. Absolutely fantastic action here in this Bantamweight yeah. contest. Yeah. Contra Palace fights 12. I'm TJ DeSantis along with Javier Vasquez. Look at the that. Mastermind Jordan Breen. Interesting right? that Duarte's circling to his right. I mean, that's definitely the power hand, and he's gotten tagged with it oh. repeatedly. Oh. Big hand right right hand 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 it's done. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I got that thought in right before it ended the fight. I'm, te I'm telling you, it's one of the things Francisco Rivera does, he lures you in, steps back, and counters beautifully. My commentary brethren, please look to your left and just look at the blood pouring into Duarte's face. Just drip, yeah. drip, drip. I'm telling you, man. I, he I, looks dead. I'm, I'm telling Francisco you. Francisco Rivera is predatory. I feel gruesome watching that. If I'm, we I'm, wondered I'm, if he was going to be able to follow up his performance over Brad McDonald with something special, we got our answer, I, and the I, answer I is yes. I'm telling you, man, I've trained with a lot of guys, and I'm telling you, he's one of the best, if not the best boxers I've ever trained with. Look and again, that. accuracy, no wasted motion. Beautiful. That was a coffin nail. And look, it just stood over him and looked at him like, what's up? Incredible. Francisco Rivera definitely showing off that he is worthy of that title of WEC and UFC veteran with a performance like this, Jordan Green. I won't be surprised if the phone was ringing soon. Antonio Duarte looks like he is in space. He is down, and even though he's starting to respond to the questions from a doctor, he is in uh, a bad way right yeah, now. That was Fra brutal. Francisco Rivera has just silly, silly power. Yeah, I told you, man. I I, it's more importantly than just power. We talked earlier, Dave Huckabee has power. But this is technique and power coalescing. He gets you, he, what he does, he's an outstanding counter striker. When I got, he lit me up. The first time we sparred, he lit me up. And I wasn't understanding what was he doing. What he does is he lures you in. He says, come on. He counters, he moves his head, which nobody does. He moves his head and throws punches at the same time. He clips you with the first one and then drops you with the second and one. And that's exactly what he did to Brad McDonald, and that's exactly what he just did to Antonio, Antonio Duarte. Incredible, incredible punching by Francisco Rivera in a very short but thoroughly entertaining bantamweight scrap. I'm interested to see the well-being of Francisco Rivera's right hand. He shook it out a couple of times, and uh, for good reason, because that thing landed hard. He, he whipped his head. Watch watch Duarte's head right there. 
Look at also, that. look at that first left hook. He's moving backwards Boom. and still sets up. And that last punch, he hits him right underneath the ear. That's not even perfectly clean. He still wipes him out. Yeah, he, cl he clubbed him. That was a club. He hit him with his forearm on that one. He basically hit him on the point of the jaw, meeting the rest of the skull. That is just brutal, brutal stuff from Francisco Rivera. If he can continue to become that confident in his boxing, you just don't have that many guys in MMA that can step back, slip, rip, and then there's three other punches that are coming with well, that kind of heat. Guys will slip, but they're not slipping and countering at the same time. This is something I've worked tremendously on. Just watch and this and enjoy it. Watch this. Step back. Boom. See what I'm saying? Watch he the lose, faces. Watch the faces of the people cage side if you can if you can see them. If we could get a reverse angle of that. People, people were just agape. Francisco Rivera making a case for your all-violence team, Jordan Green. Yeah, all-violence team. I mean, I like to give credit to the guys that knock out the, the biggest and baddest dudes. And so far, it's his first of the calendar year. But I have to be honest, 135, when I compile that all-violence list, it's one of the hardest ones to get to. See how, he, see how he steps back and counters? Beautiful. Beautiful. Just watch the faces, including <laughs> including us. Jeremy Jeremy Luchow and the and the floor manager there just look mortified. Oh my God, what happened? Yeah, but, look at look at you guys. <laughs> I'm glad we got in the shot for that one. A little cameo action. It's always good stuff. Francisco Rivera definitely doing work here at Tachi Palace. Well, no, another day at the coming. office. Let me take my gloves off. I'm gonna go get a go get a drink <laughs> later on. If we're gonna have hey, to fill time in the interest of well-being of a fighter. I'm glad at least we got a highlight that we can talk about <laughs> over and over again. I, mean, I Antonio Duarte is now on his feet, responding more actively yeah. to the ringside position. Great sign to see. You never want anybody to get hurt, but holy smokes, you do want to see guys finish and finish emphatically. And Cisco Rivera in his last two fights, I mean, apart from the Johnny Boneses of the world, the An the Anderson Silvas of the world, it's hard to think of guys if you just if you just ask someone, hey, who in MMA has had the most two dynamic finishes in their last two fights? It's Francisco Rivera. Yeah, I mean, he wiped out two two solid fighters in brutal fashion. Just because you heard, haven't heard of Antonio Duarte and most of his fights have come in northern Mexico, don't think him a lesser fighter. And not only that, he was dominated and dispatched in his realm. Antonio Duarte yep. is a stand-up striker with a boxing background, and he just got absolutely nuked. I, I, I told you, man, it's not the smartest thing in the world to stand with Francisco Rivera. And I called it, I said, if he stands with them, he's got tr Rivera's got tremendous power, and I wouldn't stand with him. Fantastic stuff by Francisco Rivera, the knockout coming in the first round. We will go to Joe Martinez to get our official time. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, 15 seconds, round number one. Winner by KO victory and a win dedicated to his ailing mother, Cecilia Alvarado. Your winner, Francisco, Cisco Rivera. These dudes don't get paid by the hour. Definitely not, and Francisco Rivera making that known in his last two Tachi Palace fights performances. What is the next step for Francisco Rivera? Is it another fight here? Do you think this was enough to get the phone call from Sean Shelby to maybe get a fight in the UFC? Well, you never know. You got your medicals done. You're an entertaining guy. You're a UFC vet. Maybe they need someone on short notice. You're the guy, Johnny on the spot. But even if it's not, even if he keeps taking more fights, at Tachi in California. I'd like to see him face some tougher grapplers that are going to be dedicated to the takedown because Brad McDonald had a level of, frankly, arrogance about his stand-up that got him clobbered. And in this case, Duarte, that's how he fights. That's what he's good at, stand-up. He tried what he was good at and unfortunately got crushed for it. I'd like to see a guy who wants to take Francisco Rivera down, who has competent stand-up, but actually wants to do something on the ground. It's not easy. It's not easy. He's got great takedown defense. He's got great footwork to boot. So... Don't think that, oh, okay, we got to test his takedown defense. He's got great takedown defense as well. Definitely a guy to keep your eye on and a guy that if he does get in there with tough wrestlers and is able to stop their takedowns, I don't think it's going to be too long before Sean Shelby gives him a call back. Francisco Rivera wearing a shirt that says, fight me. That's who sponsors him. I think a bunch of other 35-pounders are looking at him going, yeah, no thanks. I'll pass, dude. I'll pass. I mean, I don't, want, I don't want to fight that guy. If I'm at 135 right now, if you are looking for a guy outside the UFC who's a veteran, hey, I could make my name on that guy. That's the guy I could get my shot off of. Why would you choose him? Yeah. Let's move on. A battle of veterans up next at Palace Fights 12.